everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this edition of Race Face Driver Updates. We have a lot of drivers that saw action last weekend, so let's get right to it. Anthony Alfredo was at Kentucky Speedway for a NASCAR Xfinity Series doubleheader event on Thursday and Friday. So how did the Richard Childress rookie do? Let's check in with Anthony for a Race 1 recap. All right, just wrapped up race number one here at Kentucky Speedway. Really great night in our Alsco Chevrolet Camaro. The number 21 guys did a phenomenal job on pit road, and everyone at Richard Childress Racing back at the shop and here at the track have built me a really fast piece, so I'm excited to get back after tomorrow night. We got a longer race tomorrow, much longer, almost 70 laps. So 200 laps, tonight was only 134. Went by fast, got behind on a restart when uh, kind of went the wrong way on adjustments and fixed it, drove all the way back through the field, salvaged a fifth place finish. Uh, Fox said it was six or something, but the pylon said fit, so I'm going to go with the top five. I think that's what it was. So, uh, solid night, great drive at the end, great call by Andy Street to take tires there at the end. Uh, we didn't really have much to lose, and like I said, we have really fast race cars, so we were able to get back up there. I think we could have even finished a little bit better if we had a couple more laps, and uh, I think we could have won if we had clean air. Clean air is king, especially here, just one groove. There's nowhere you could really go. You can't move around too much because of the PJ1, and uh, it just seems like everyone runs the same line, so it's very difficult to pass. But uh, we had a solid car, and we're able to make some moves. Like I said, if we can get up uh, up front and maintain that track position and you know hold the lead or be in the top three, we can try to make something happen for our first win tomorrow night. I, I was hoping it'd come tonight, but nonetheless learned a lot and rebounded really well. So I'm really proud of our team and looking forward to uh, getting back into the Alsco Chevrolet Camaro tomorrow night for another race and trying to be just a few spots better. But thank you everyone for the support. It was an awesome night, a uh, great building night, trying to be better every time. We're always hungry, and that's not just a pasta pun. Great run, Anthony. But wait, there's more. In less than 24 hours, he returned for race two, but this time it was 200 laps. Can he repeat and get another top 10? Let's go back to the driver for an update on that race. Hey everybody, Anthony Alfredo here just wrapped up our second and final race here in Kentucky Speedway. Night was longer, it was 200 laps, so about almost 70 laps longer than last night, and thought it was working out in our favor. Our car had tremendous speed, especially on the long run, almost as fast as Xfinity Internet, and unfortunately just was a little bit too tight, so we tried to adjust on it, and uh, it, it was the start of the final stage. It just fell behind there on the start because we lacked a little short run speed, but came right back at the end, had plenty of speed, and nailed our green flag pit stop, did all we could there, drove all the way back up to fifth, and... Uh, we ran in the top three the, the majority of the beginning of the race, but at the end there, we were, like I said, we were about fifth, uh, came in for our final pit stop, and the car pitted in front of me, the right front tire changer ran out, you know, and he just, like they do, they kind of run out of the box, and I was already turning in, so I pulled the wheel to go around him. I wasn't going to clean the guy out, and I got just looped sideways on the brakes. I couldn't do anything. I just slid into the box sideways, um, screwed up our whole strategy there. We were going to uh, put ourselves up front so that we could be in clean air. Our car definitely was better in clean air. I think everyone's was. So that's what we were going to do. And unfortunately that uh, messed us up there. And then somehow we got some sort of penalty on pit road, just a part of it, but uh, had to start at the tail end. And, you know, I made that mistake coming in the box. So I drove my freaking butt off at the end from the tail end of the field all the way to sixth. So we got another sixth place finish. I feel like we finished sixth every week, but uh, I had to work really hard for that one, rightfully so, because my guys worked so hard for me. They brought a really fast car, and our Alsco Chevy was, I thought, good enough to put in victory lane if uh, the chips fell our way, and I uh, just can't make mistakes like that. I just got to clean it up, but for not even having, I haven't even raced 10 races yet. So uh, just getting better every week, uh, but like I said, always say, I'm always hungry, and uh, I'm doing really well for the lack of experience, but I can always be better. Uh, so that's what I'm working for. I want to win races. That's what we come here to do every week. And I think today and yesterday even were a step in the right direction. So very thankful for the opportunity, and I appreciate everyone who supports me. Uh, it was great to run up front and have great speed tonight. And uh, just to come back and rebound once again for a great finish was, uh, was good. But um, the guys deserve it. I think we could have finished even better the last two nights. Just, uh, just different scenarios. But that's a part of racing, and that's how you get better. And uh, we'll just keep working hard. I'll keep doing my best to get better. And... We'll see you at the next race next weekend at Texas Motor Speedway. I would say that's a successful two days of racing. Up next for Anthony, NASCAR Xfinity at Texas Motor Speedway on Saturday. Let's now head to the Midwest where we find Jesse Love, who was coming off a huge arc of wind last weekend, returning to the dirt this week in the Power Eye Series with Keith Coons Motorsports for three races in three days. 
First at Humboldt Speedway. Let's check with Jesse for a quick update on night one. What's up guys, Jesse Love here. Um, really, ton of speed tonight, just had a little bit of bad luck on our side, if you will. Uh, timed in third in our heat, or sorry, in practice. Uh, started seventh in our heat, drove up to third. So seventh to third was pretty good for passing points. Um, decent, we started seventh in the feature, which is good. Um, we were able to drive up to sixth, uh, and, and we were driving up to in, in, into the top five and had a ton of speed, but my teammate um, got turned in front of me, and I was kind of just, I was, me and him and the guy that cleaned him out were all kind of entering the corner around the same area and just had nowhere to go and kind of got caught up in the mess. So, um, you know, nothing we could have really done there, just part of, part of it sometimes. So uh, good news is we got a lot of speed. We we're really fast. Uh, so I'm happy with it. Well, I got a lot of confidence going into uh, Green Valley tomorrow. So. It's a cool little racetrack, good fun bullring so from what I see on the video, so hopefully we can uh, pick off a win there and, and we got a lot of speed, just kind of got to get a little bit of uh, good luck, if you will, on our side. So uh, I'm looking forward to tomorrow night. We'll keep you guys posted and we'll see you guys tomorrow at Green Valley. As you heard in that post-race update, it's off to Valley Speedway for two nights of racing. But before we hear from Jesse, let's take a lap with Jesse inside the KKM Midget. Jesse started second in his heat and made his way into the lead for a heat race victory. Let's now check back with the driver to hear how the A main ended up. What's up guys, it's Jesse. Um, good run tonight for the most part. Uh, started, went second to first in our heat race. Uh, up around the top, cool race track tonight. Started sixth in the feature, drove up to about fourth. Ran fourth for most of the race. Um, kind of hard to pass in some areas. This long red flag, followed by another long red flag. That uh, after that, I just couldn't quite run the top how I wanted to in three and four. Um, so I kind of had to go down to the bottom there in, in three and four. And I just, I was, I just made a couple too many mistakes there, and, and it cost me. So um, definitely, good news is we had a lot of speed tonight. We were able to drive up to the front and uh, ran up front the whole race. Um, just made a few many, too, too many mistakes on my part, dropped back there at the end a little bit. So um, we'll keep on getting better later and, uh, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. There was little time for rest as he was back in the car for night two at Valley Speedway. Jesse had yet another top five heat race finish in third, which transferred him into the A main. Unfortunately, the luck was not on Jesse's side as he finished the feature in 16th. Up next for Jesse, back to the pavement in the Arkham Menard series at Iowa Speedway on Saturday. Caden Honeycutt traveled to Boyd Raceway in his number 37 Dirt Limited Modified. Caden continued his dominance in the Red Rocket, parking it in victory lane for the sixth time this year in nine starts. He then made it to Southern Oklahoma Speedway in his Crate Late Model for the DFW Late Model Series. Caden captured a third in his heat race and started sixth for the feature. Caden raced around the top 10 all night and came home with a sixth place finish in only his second start in the late model. Like I've said before, this young man can drive anything with four wheels on it. Joe Valento took his KBR Performance Arden Mills number 30 Pro Truck to Marshfield Motor Speedway for round three of the Midwest Truck Series. Joe qualified second, 
but started ninth due to the invert from his previous victory. He struggled to move forward mainly because of the tire rule in that series, but managed to come away with a top 10 finish in ninth position. Up next for Joe, Carolina Pro Late Models at Hickory Motor Speedway this Saturday. Bryce Bizanson was at South Sound Speedway with his number seven, Friends of Jacklin Foundation Jefferson Racing Super Late Model. Bryce started fourth in the feature, but got caught behind some slower cars and was shuffled back into eighth. He then worked his way back up to the top five and was making grounds on the leaders when his brakes started to fail. Bryce attempted to hang on and made it 65 laps of the 75 lap feature before the brakes went completely out, ending his race early. Up next for Bryce, an East Coast trip to run at both Tri-County Speedway and historic Hickory Motor Speedway this Friday and Saturday for Lead Falk Racing. Let's now head to Madera Speedway in Madera, California, where we find several of the race face drivers in action, four to be exact. Let's start off with Joey East, who was competing in round two of the Nut Up Pro Late Model Series with Nate Clower Motorsports. Joey qualified 11th, but unfortunately made contact with the wall on lap 17, ending his night early. Up next for Joey, SRL Tour at Irwindale Speedway on Saturday. Cassidy Hines, Jake Bowman, and Brody Moore were also at Madera Speedway for round two in the 5150 Junior Late Model Series. Cassidy started 14th in the feature and was working her way up through the field when going into turn two, she was involved in a wreck that ended up with a car on top of her roof. The team went to work and tapped out the damage and Cassidy rebounded to a ninth place finish. Jake Bowman qualified his Nate Clower entry in the ninth position and raced up to the sixth place, then got stuck on the outside on a restart and dropped back to ninth at the halfway break. After the break, Jake started his march to the front and moved into six on lap 42 and stayed there for the remaining 27 laps, bringing home a sixth place finish. Brody Moore was also at Madera for the 5150 Junior Late Model Series, where he qualified his number 78 Wilson Motorsports entry in the 10th position. On lap eight of the feature, Brody suffered some front end damage after making contact with his teammate Holly Clark who had checked up due to an incident in front of her. The Madera Sun definitely played a factor in obstructing Brody's view. The damage forced Brody to park his car and retire from the event. Up next for all of those junior late model drivers is back at Madera Speedway on July 25th for round three. Hopefully it will not be as hot as it was this past weekend. Haley Constance pulled double duty first at Deming Speedway in her 600 micro sprint where she picked up a heat race victory but unfortunately ran into issues in the feature causing her night to end early. She then switched to the pavement at Wenatchee Valley Super Oval for the first junior late model points race of the season. The team made all the right adjustments when it came to the feature event and Haley came away with the win parking her number 78 Joe's Racing Late Model in Victory Lane. Check out this short clip from Haley in Victory Lane. All right, climbing out of the car, the first ever Junior Late Model winner in Wenatchee Valley Super Oval history, Haley Constance. Well, Haley, you got out front early in the race and held off challenges from Getz and Moran, and you park it in Victory Lane. You're the first Junior Late Model winner in track history. Yeah, it's definitely awesome. I can't believe I won my first junior late model race here. I feel bad for Evan. I kind of screwed up on one of the starts there and kind of screwed him a little bit. But I'm super glad that we were able to get up front and have patience and just take the win. Team Constant has a little fun after the race with what has become a tradition after the win. Check this out. Okay guys, so it's tradition every time Haley gets to win a first in something that she challenges herself to do, there comes a haircut.
Oh, watch his ear. Watch his ear, Haley. <laughs> That's close, Haley. That's too close. <laughs> Haley, too close. <laughs> Haley, I don't think you have a future in hairdressing industry. Up next for Haley, 600 micro sprints and the Clay Cup Nationals, July 16th through the 18th. Katie Henninger was in CRA Junior Late Model Competition at Indianapolis Speedrome. I don't need to say anything, so check out this video clip from one excited driver. Hey everyone, I am super excited because I have got my first CRA Junior Late Model win um, for the second race of the season at Speedrun Speedway in Indiana. Um, we were doing really good. We had um, two practices this morning. I think we were third, third fastest in those two practice sessions. And then we had a rain delay, which was quite a while. It was raining really hard. And then they canceled the heat races because of the rain delay because it um, took so long. And so we had three races right before my qualifying. And we had no practice. We just went out and we had qualifying for five laps. We qualified fourth. And they inverted five out of ten. And so we started outside pole, and we got a good restart. We ran outside with the pole sitter, Dawson Nall, side by side for about a lap um, until I ducked in behind him and got a clean pass um, below him coming out of the turn one and two. And then we led the race, and we finally came home with a win. Now that's how it's done. Congratulations, Katie. Up next for Katie, Junior Late Models at Kill Care Raceway on August 2nd. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't miss Race Face Spotlight on Thursdays at 8 p.m. this week featuring Katie Hedinger. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race race drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.